Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to the home build. Today we're going to be trimming out our electrical. So I'm the homeowner. So there's some electrical that I did in addition to the, the what the electrical electrician did, let's say. So there's quite a bit of extra work that I've done myself. As the homeowner in the state of Oregon, you can also do the electrical. And I've been doing electrical for a while for myself uh, on my home projects and that sort of thing. Lots of research feel very comfortable with what I do so and I'm always checking to double check for codes and that sort of thing make sure things are done right so I'm going to show you the process of what I do for trim out for some EV chargers so some 50 amp breakers uh, and plugins and outlets for that some can lights some outlets some switches some three-way switches uh, and that sort of thing so and as well as some sconces in the uh, in the stairwell. So uh, Let's go ahead. And let's get started All right, so the stage that we're in now the electrician they've came in they've done their uh, Their final trim out and and their inspection and got a pass. So Now it's my turn. I made sure to keep everything of my portion of the work separate from theirs That way they can warranty their work. I take care of my work Whenever, if for some reason I was to connect to theirs, there'd be no warranty at all for the, as far as them. And I'd take sole responsibility for the warranty. So keep that in mind when you're doing things like this for yourself. Once you start touching other trades work, the warranty all falls back onto your shoulders. So uh, the first thing that I did was I hooked up power for the septic. So in the bid for this, somehow is that gray area that they didn't provide power for a septic. Who would have thought? But anyhow, so all I needed was a 20 amp breaker. Um, so what I did way back, if you look at one of my previous videos, out there's my septic from the, the power box. Coming down underneath is a conduit, tied in to a junction right here. From there it goes in, ties into one of these boxes here, comes through up through a sleeve and powered up from there. So, so the way I got two panels, it's a two 200 amp service. So a total of 400 amps uh, about. And I intended to have the electrician put all of his stuff over on his side and all my stuff on this side, as well as uh, I want to run power for a shop so and that would be about a hundred amp breaker so that is eventually going to go here and out that direction but since he's already put in some like the oven so a couple uh, three four thirty amps a sixty amp you know it's starting to get up there in amps um, I like to do my EV charger so two fifty 50 amp breakers are gonna go on this side here to help uh, even out the loads in, in the panels. So two 50 amp breakers, I got some lights and some other things going in there, leaving the rest of this uh, beyond the septic system, the rest of it is gonna be dedicated for the shop and uh, out exterior lights if I was to run some exterior lights and that sort of thing, but just a, a couple small amped uh, breakers for that. So most of it for the bigger stuff and the rest of the house is over here on, on in that panel. That's just kind of how it how it's worked out. So next we're gonna get started on some EV chargers, some 50 amp breakers. So I already got one hooked up here because right, I plan on having two. You know, of course I could have a welder or something plugged into it as well. The other is gonna be going right over here on this side. So yeah, it's a double car garage, part of the mess. Got lots going on though. Uh, one car be on this side, I can plug it in here. And the, re the other reason I had it towards the outer part of the garage is if for some reason I didn't want to park it in the garage, which I won't. <laughs> uh, who parks in the garage nowadays? I don't know. Anyhow, my cord is gonna make it underneath the garage door and, and out there. So but I still wanted the charger or the outlet inside the garage. So here's the process. 
So when it comes to these 50 amp breakers, if you're wondering which is the top, which is the bottom, you really got to look at the cord to see rather than the cord going up and hanging down or if it's just hanging down. It doesn't matter if it's up or down, but I want my cord to be able to just hang straight down. So the plan is to have it up like this, right there. That's how my cord is hanging straight down. So kind of a, something to think about when you're trying to get this heavy gauge, uh, six gauge wire in into the box, how it twists. So my plan is that it's gonna twist up. So it's like that. Uh, also, as far as the red and the black uh, conductors, it doesn't matter which side they're on when they go hook up at the panel. Uh, they're both gonna have the same voltage in, in it. Uh, and also uh, make sure when you trim in this back that none of the plastic uh, sleeve is uh, being crimped when you're tightening down the screw. But make sure you're full, fully seated into it. All right, we got our 220, uh, excuse me, 240 outlet taken care of for our EV charger. Now we're in our garage, we're gonna talk, we're gonna finish doing the outlets. So electrician provided me two. So one there, one in that other corner. It's two enough for a garage. Heck no. So did a bunch more going around. And the starting point for my circuit is right over there. So it's gonna go from there, it goes through the wall to that outlet there, goes up for a TV. And then from there, it goes up and over, down to this one, loops to that one, and ends there. So back at the very first one, I'm gonna put a GFCI outlet on it. So everything's gonna be a 20 amp breaker. So make sure you have 20 amp GFCI, and then as well as all of my um, outlets are gonna be also 20 amp. You can't change or reduce that to 15. It's made differently, use 20. It also has the little line on it that indicates that it's a 20 amp as well, sir. So. Well, we're outside gonna be installing the security light. So I already wired way back. You can see one of my other videos on the waterproofing, that sort of thing for it. But now we're at that phase of, of hooking it up. So I had two wires. Um, to, uh, they're 14 gauge wires, or 14 gauge Romex coming out. So I trimmed them up. So they're only about a six inch tail on them. And I twisted the grounds together. So let's go have a look at that. And then, not just twisting though, you're gonna have, you need to put a, a clamp on it like this. And I'll show that. And you're gonna crimp it on it so that there's no way any uh, connection can get broke at this ground. So, and then they come with, the security light that I have, comes with a nice pigtail quick connect that those are gonna connect onto have one on the light, and you'll see that, that whole process. So I wanted to show you the kind of an up close of the security light that we have. Of course, this one's hardwired. You can buy ones that are battery operated, but I didn't want to mess with batteries. So 
this is the one we picked it's um <laughs> yeah, it's brown it's a kind of a bronze color so we're going to end up painting our house a darker color so that's kind of one of the things we wanted plus it's led i mean everything's going to led there's no reason to have any any of those others the cool thing that i really like about this is it has, it has just a quick quick connect uh, the wires just poke in uh, you can see that there's uh, another one i i just poke the wires in very very simple and and that's right so i'll just pop that together i it had a weather strip on this back side that i so i it says on the drawing to put it on the box itself but i like putting it on the fixture so that way i can get it exactly where i want it uh, on the fixture so i'll go ahead and, and mount this there's a, a center screw of how it how it installs get it all angled the way i wanted adjust the timer how much feet so as far as this goes so as i come around the corner here or come out the door there you know so i'm going to probably want at least you know somewhere around well, and it actually have a, have a range anywhere from 10 feet to uh, even big, up to probably about 75 feet. That's way too much. I'll get the cat, I'll get everything. So probably right around 30 feet is what we'll be shooting for uh, or a little less. All right, now I'm gonna install a exterior electrical outlet. So I wanted one right by my, uh, my, my garage door. If I needed to plug in anything, really. The near, other nearest ones were gonna be the back patio, front patio, uh, or I open the garage and it's in there, but this way I can at least have my garage down. So I elected to uh, have a slim profile you know, if you can go back and look at my videos on how you waterproof all this, so that's that to me is really important. Uh, ran the wire, so there's just one conductor coming out. It's a 12 gauge, so yellow is typically 12 gauge. And I knew I wanted it recessed in there, so that I can have all the the components of the outlet in it and have a slim profile. Uh, I'll show you in a minute uh, what the electrician provided. It's this humongous thing, cover, which to me is just, it's just an eyesore. So uh, someday I'll probably end up changing that out, just not right at the moment. So <clears throat> what I do is, I gotta trim it to uh, about six inches. So right about there, okay. And in some ways, uh, sort of a dull uh, utility knife works works nice for trimming that so right down the center is where the copper line is black and the, the white are on each side so you want to be careful you're not cutting into those extremely careful otherwise you cause a short but trimming it I just basically almost just uh, scored it and then it peels apart nicely like that and this is just paper, which it's been outside in the weather. So this paper is actually wet. Uh, it's interesting how it's been curled up and so forth. But once I get the cover on, we're gonna be good to go. So here's the process. The other thing I did want to show you about the GFCI, so it's exterior, it has to be ground fault circuit interrupter protected. Uh, you know, if it got wet or anything like that, that it's not going to shock you for whatever tool or a product you're using. But make sure the, the outlet that you pick has the 20 amp because they also have 15 amps as well. Make sure you get 20 amps. 
it's just less likely to blow or trip and, and that sort of thing um, as quickly when you're running like a, a blower or something like that so whereas a 15 amp could tend to pop pop the breaker trip the gfci that sort of thing a little a little sooner but it has good still has the all the protection that we need so looks great happy with it slim profile let me show you uh another option that in my opinion aesthetically is less pleasing so here's another style and yeah that's what i was thinking too is good golly why would you want something so huge right on the outside of the building but this would allow uh easier access for your cord to plug in fold down go under i get that if you were going to be leaving something plugged in in the weather and it's protected but uh, what I care more about is the aesthetics par portion of it as well. And being as big as it is, it's just it's just ugly. So I like that slim profile. All right, I got my future cover plates on. My box is here. So that's that's all future stuff, back patio and that sort of thing. Got one up there, one over here. Got wire nuts on it to make sure that for some reason, if power got turned on, it, it'll still be okay. Uh, behind the box um, and that sort of thing it's all gonna go to a switch uh, the switches I'll probably put in and but uh, and that sort of thing if they did get flipped on then you know it'd still be safe all right now what I got going is I have three switches that go to that future outside stuff happening so uh, when I was painting what I did is I stuffed everything with um, some paper so apparently it's got a little bit of overspray and that sort of thing oh this was actually from the, the tapers so I want to separate it how it's going to be for three switches okay because so we got power coming into it then we have that power has to get to all three switches to go out to where the, the <coughs> to the to the boxes outside though eventually there'll be like future uh light fixtures or or that sort of thing so that's kind of what's going to be happening and as soon as i get this i'll show you i labeled it to lights light 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 so there's three lights and then there's one that i mark p for power so that's the incoming power uh that otherwise it just it, it, it's helpful in that respect, uh, you know, if you if you talk to like an electrician, they probably got a better system that's more organized uh, and that sort of thing. But for me, uh, this this is gonna work. Um, when I had the the family, the family was actually uh, wiring this all up, which is great. But I got three switches. They left me two pig t pigtails out of four grounds, so. Uh, I'm going to have to splice on a, another one to go to the third switch. No big deal. It's just, uh, you know, there should have been three of these sticking out and one. So there, there was a total of four grounds. One should have got clipped, leaving me three, and it's crimped together. Uh, but that didn't happen. So like I said, I'll take, and that is... Uh, 12 gauge wire, so I want to make sure I use the proper wire. So I'm going to start off by stripping a little bit of the, what, the con for all of these, and they all get wired and under together. So a switch is just a break in power, is really what it's doing. So all the commons, the grounds, uh, they just, they get all connected. So one, one is the power goes back to the panel. The other goes to whatever light fixture and, and that sort of thing. So um, all of the ground, or all the white commons can get wire nutted together. So probably would have been helpful to ha go ahead and trim them all to the same length, which is actually what I'm going to do. So I've done that first. Let's 
rookie 101. I'm really liking these green line uh, wire strippers. those together. And you want to tug to make sure you don't have one that's loose. So that, fold that back up in there. We got our switches, so 20, 20 amp switch, because it's going back 20 amp breaker. Okay, so that's important. Incoming power is gonna be down on the bottom. It actually has a wire stripping gauge. And this particular one, some of them, can just shove it into it like that. Oh, there we go. Still requires it to be crimped. So other types you can just shove it in and it's in there. This one's different. So let me get that. Alright, now what I'm after is hooking up my three-way switches. So I got a switch right here, power coming into it, and then going from there going to some can lights, and then also from here going over to a switch over there. So what that type of three-way is called is a dead-end three-way. So it looks something like this. So we got power coming in. That's what the outlet is on the left. Going to the three-way, okay? And then from there it goes up to the light. And then it also jumps over to another switch. And the white uh, of that, um, one of those conductors, the white, is gonna be power going to the light switch. So uh, thanks to another website, Electric U. So that's kind of where I'm finding this at and uh, kind of helps train you. So if you want to know more on freeways, check out his website, Electric U. Uh, really does a really, really awesome job. Uh, slightly entertaining, which is kind of cool. But here we are. So this is one, one section, one part of it. The other thing for this particular, I have power take, um, and I'm gonna have power right here. I'm also taking this power going over to another group of the three-way switches for the living room. And that one will also have a dead-end three-way. So uh, this is the process. Here we go. So the dead dead end three-way, here's the other end of it. I gotta make this a little longer. I got somehow that got short. But taping up the white common, okay, from here goes to the light switch. And the other end, it, that's where it is, it's going to light switch. Okay, and then all the, the commons get tied back in over in here. The red <clears throat> the red's gonna go on one, goes in the same spot. There, okay, actually, I guess it's opposite spots. So, follow the diagram. Uh, this is just one method. There's there's two others. So check that other website out, EU, and uh, see the other ones. Do do what's best for yours.
All right, so what I got here is, let's see, there we go. Shoot, that wants to spin on me. So I got a different type of three-way here, thanks to EU, help me out. Um, so we got power going into a three-way switch, okay? Then I have another three-way switch on the other side where it goes to the light. So something different than I did this last time because, you know, maybe there was an easier way I like to make things hard. <laughs> uh, but anyhow, so how this switch is wired up, I had the power coming in, had to split it. So two pigtails coming in, going to power here, power here for two, two different sets of lights. But let's just talk about one. We got power coming in and then the two commons that go transfer to the other side, transferring power. Can't remember what the names of those are called. Maybe you can help me out. They got a certain name, uh, but they're going to the other switch. And then from there, it goes to the light. So back over to this side, okay. The commons are all connected. There we go. So, and I've made sure to label them. I got the, the south half and then I got the north half. Okay, uh, it's pretty obvious when it comes to which one goes to the lights because um, we have uh, four conductors with one and two with the other. So the black, white, and brown, those are the ones going to the light fixture. So that's this one going to one section of lights. And then that's this one. The the com the white commons are all together, okay. In this particular application uh, for three way, these two are those commons, the transfer legs uh, from one switch, and this is for the other switch, okay. As far as power depends on which you know you switch, and this goes to the light. So. I'll be hooking that up on this section, though, I'm going to put uh, two dimmers. That way we've got options, some low lighting for some movie night, all that sort of thing. But uh, so I'm going to be putting dimmers on this side. Here's my dimmer, dimmable uh, switch. It's three way or single. So I'm going to use that for my switches. Comes with almond and another color kit, too. All right, so what I got going on now is I got two switches. I'm in the, the primary bedroom. Uh, I'm gonna have two cam, or excuse me, four cam lights. Two in the front, kind of where the TV area would be. And then I'm gonna have two in the back uh, for reading and that sort of thing. And they're also gonna be on dimmers. So how I wired this, if you remember way back, is from the panel, the panel's over there in the garage. I got power, it's a 14-2 wire coming in and going down here okay, to feed power to these switches and then the lights go out of that. Uh, from there I also have another leg, a 14-2 going up and feeding more power for the dining room and then from there going to the living room and so forth. So, uh, so uh, all the whites, all the commons go together. So that, and they go back to the panel for, to the ground bar. And then also we have our, our bare copper for ground right at the switch that goes back to the panel. Those are all connected. So all I need is a single pull. Well, these, these special, uh, these special ones will also do three way or a single pull. So one switch or two or more switches. Okay. So. What I'm doing is this is the power coming in. Okay, and then I got a little jumper here. It's gonna go to the other one. And then from, uh, and then the power that goes out to feed more lights is also gonna connect it kind of like this one is here. 
all these other these other two are going to go to the lights so that'll be my gold screw okay if i wanted to if i had three ways like i did on that other one in the living room this is the one i would be using for controlling the the dimmer so here's hooking up a single pole switch All right, now I'm going to be hooking up for where the TV's going. I got a power, so 120 power. Um, it's a 15 amp breaker, so, and then also a port for low voltage to be coming through. So pretty, pretty neat little contraption. Also has the outlet fastened to it, flush mount. It's kind of nice. All goes in this type of box. So this was something I had to order online. So take a look. Um, when you're looking at and also make sure you count everything if you're having to order stuff online so i'm three short i needed three more of these i've already installed uh five of them so one two three and four actually three so two short two short uh well that's all right let me show you kind of it's kind of a just Regular old, uh, this style doesn't poke right in. So, because I got two, a double, uh, actually one does, but everything else. So we got USB going down. So my, my uh, console and stuff will probably be on a shelf down below, down here, as well as all of the, um, the speaker wires are coming down below, not directly behind the TV, so. And then also have coax from for cable. If I wanted to just go directly to the TV, that sort of thing, I have an option there, and as well as Ethernet, so I could just do streaming straight from the TV uh, and that sort of thing. So a hardware connection instead of a Wi-Fi connection is just better. So um, here we go. All right, so we got our can lights in, we got our switches all on, all that sort of thing. So the house portion's ready. Now we got the home runs to, to tie in. So you can see the electrician did several, but I got to do this, these extra wires or here, these extra circuits here. So these here are an arc fault breaker. So lights uh, and outlets in the living areas have to be arc fault breakers. By code, uh, check with your local codes, electricians, that sort of thing on, on that sort of thing. Uh, honestly, I, I, I hate the darn things, but that is code and it's for safety um, and that sort of thing. 
Bathrooms, no, um, I believe. The, and that sort of thing. So make sure you're using the appropriate breakers for the appropriate, appropriate rooms. Uh, like always, I'm, I'm a carpenter. I know, I know several things about it and researching it, but I'm not an electrician. I'm the homeowner, so I feel comfortable doing that. Uh, so this is why I'm doing this. So uh, the other thing is make sure you turn the whole power off to your panel before doing any work to it. That also shuts off power to everything in the house. So be aware of that. But from here down, it's live power. Okay, so they're protected, fairly safe, sort of, but it's just one of those things you want to always be cautious of. So when I'm adding breakers, doing messing with wiring, that's really, it's so easy to touch something on accident. It's not worth ever, it's not ever worth being electrocuted. So um, with that being said, uh, let's get started on the home runs tying in. All right, so I'm, I went ahead and labeled, I got north can lights, so basically the north half of what I have going, it's gonna be on one circuit. It's gonna be on an arc fault breaker, 15 amp breaker with a, a 14 gauge wires. There's also the south half, which is the master bedroom, um, family room, dining room, that sort of thing on, on this one. So that's gonna be another breaker that's gonna go up here, keep them all nice, stacked nicely, uh, and that sort of thing. I got a uh, 12 2 wire for it, for the, it says outside lights. So that'll be on a, a 20 amp circuit. Um, and then I got a freezer, freezers and the, and the refrigerator that's in the garage. It's gonna be on a circuit all by itself and that sort of thing. And as well as a, a few more. So, and then as well as of course, my two car chargers, my 50 amps. 50 amps are gonna go here on this side and I'm trying to keep them sort of balanced. Uh, uh, at least that's, that's the, th the thought, my thought anyhow. So uh, as far as amps go and that sort of thing. So I'll have a 50 amp, two 50s on this, try to keep, keep the others on the other side, but it's gonna end, in, end up almost filling up this panel. So luckily I got another panel that I can add more later on.
All right, we got our panel all hooked up, all the home runs, home runs tied in. And so now I'm gonna turn on power and one at a time, I'm gonna go check everything, make sure it's got adequate power, things don't trip, <clears throat> things like that. So make sure when you go to turn on a power, um, like always, I just wanna do repeat this. Hire an electrician if you're not comfortable with this, if you don't know what you're doing, make sure you hire an electrician to do it. They've been trained, they've gone through apprenticeships, this is what they do, okay? Um, but here we go. Make sure you're standing to the side, looking away when you turn on the main power. Okay, got main power turned back on. All the existing stuff that has been on, uh, the breakers are on. Everything that I've installed uh, is currently off. So uh, I'll check things one at a time and then uh, I'm gonna think I'm gonna start with my, my car charging the 50 amp breakers. So I'm gonna turn one on, make sure you look away. Now I'm gonna check that. I can't remember, because I didn't label it, which one is which. So 50 amp breaker, it's either gonna be this one or it's gonna be the other one. So hot to hot. Nothing. So I'm gonna check the other one. And that way I can label it too. There we go. I can get in there just right. Okay, there's 240. Okay. 120 on one leg. 120 on the other. So perfect. Love it. Uh, so now that's uh, the north side. So that also allows me to label my panel that I'm going to say that's the north. North outlet. All right, that one checks out to the side. Looking away. I can check this one. Two forty and twenty and one twenty. Beautiful. So there's that one. The next one I'm gonna check is the garage outlets. That's this twenty amp breaker right here. Looking away. Okay. Now just the outlets that I installed. Those are the ones that I'm gonna go around and check. So this is the start of my run. So it's a GFCI. I'm gonna trip that and it should turn on the other ones except for that one over there. That's a breaker all by itself for the freezer and refrigerator over in that area. So turn this on and then I can check it. First off, see if it's got power. If it doesn't, which is good. Then I'm gonna just All right, so far security lights are good, outlets are good, on, that outlet on the outside's good. All right, now we're gonna be checking our cam lights. So this top one, from what I'm marked on here, it is south can lights, living room, bedroom, or master bedroom, and dining room. Make sure you're looking away. All right, everything looks good there. I'm gonna go in, another check. All right, so we're in the, the master bedroom. This is where the leg starts. So, got my four, four cans in. So, got one on, yeah, sweet. And it's got a dimmer. So if I adjust the dimmer here, should adjust the intensity of it. Nice and bright. Okay, let's go down about halfway. Now I'm going to turn on the other one. You'll see the lights come on over there. Yeah. Adjust the ten intensity. Yeah. Nice. Love it. 
Cool, so that one's good, checks out. Now, from there, comes over to dining room. Dining room's on, okay. It's a three-way switch. That one's the other electrician. Three-way switch. So I'll come over here. That's this one right here. They should go off, okay. Now, as part of it, just to double check, I'm gonna come back. Turns back on, and then it should turn back off. That's kind of the, the way to tell whether your three-way, whoops, oh, one. So, and off, good. All right, the uh, can lights over here, they're already on. I'm gonna just, th this one is uh, on dimmer as well. So I'm gonna increase the, increase the dimmer on both, okay. Turn it off, okay. I'm gonna turn the switch, turn it off, sweet. And we're gonna come back over, turn them on, turn it on. All right, since that's not wanting to come on, one of the uh, relay wires is, is backwards for some reason. And I'm gonna say it's probably right there on that one. So that'll be one that I gotta swap around to make right. And I believe that is it as far as, I think these are on the other circuit. So that's it for that one. So there's this one here that I need to double check and, and swap right, or it's that one over there, one or the other. So uh, a little bit of troubleshooting on that. No problem though, we'll take care of it. All right, now we're back to the last one is the North, North Can Lights laundry room office. Okay, now let's go to the uh, laundry room. So that can light. Got it there. Sweet. The other one is, I believe that one. So that checks out. It's a three-way. Half tempted to actually make it a uh, uh, a sensor. Okay. That one's good. So we're gonna come into these four in here, and I think I might get a. I'm gonna take change this one out to dimmer maybe as well so that's good uh we'll double check the light under there and might not come on because i have a motion up here so this one right here There's some troubleshooting to figure out. So it should have power there. Don't. Nothing, nothing. troubleshooting so something going on here from what I remember so from the oh I know what's going on underneath the under stairs gonna get that hooked up so under here I left this one out because it wasn't labeled right here so I'm gonna hook that one up. I left it like this. 
I knew I wanted power because for some reason I didn't put um, I didn't put label it on the inside so I don't know which one goes where so I need to know which was power all right so this one down here got them all stripped so you got to be real real careful because I got power going to it so have one for the neutral shoved in there I wanted to determine which one's the hot no no nothing all right there's 120 so that's my hot leg right there so the reason for so many is one power powers this outlet uh, and the outlet behind me okay and then another jumper goes to um, all that other stuff that we didn't see so the family room or excuse me the bonus room the stair lighting and the outlets for the stair or for the bonus room so uh, once those are connected then then I'm then I'm, all that up there should be good so one of these though also goes to this light that's just right here and in, in here so I need to figure out which one's that light Okay, and then everything else <clears throat> is gonna be that other stuff. So, if I connect the two here until I figure out which one is the light, looking away, there's the light right there. So I know that's the light. These three are gonna get connected uh, on the switch. Okay, or I connect them with the jumper going to the switch, and that might be might be the case. It's uh, they're 15 amp, and let's see how we got it on this one. So what I could actually do, oh, that's a three-way. I gotta go get a single. So once I get a single, I might be able to push in on one, the other two, tie it in. Uh, and then those are connected and then the second option is for the light All right, so this one I'm gonna do this up here. So it goes around And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go turn the breaker off Because I don't want to be messing with this and it sparks breaker off all right, so uh, I just turned the breaker on. I got, so on this side I have power, and then the two legs that go to this outlet and that outlet, and the other leg that goes to the stairs and to the bonus room. So those are connected, <coughs> and one's a push-in, and one and two are in the screw itself. The other one, this one here, goes to the light. So now, if I press and hit the switch button, should turn on, sweet, but also my outlet should be working. Correct, correct, and I'll go around and I'll check that other one as well, and then, then we're gonna go check everything else. First, I wanna button this all up. Well, take a look at that. Uh, my lights are on, okay, which is great. Sconces. Okay, so now, ooh, lights are on up here. Off, off, sweet. Got power. Got power. Power. Yeah, power. I've got the power. All right, for troubleshooting, for here in the living room, troubleshooting the dimmer switch. So I got power that comes into here, that feeds that switch over there, and then the lights go from there. So what I came up with the conclusion of is the dimmer switch had to be at the source of the load. So brought it over here, swapped them around, and everything worked out great, okay? Upstairs, because I, um for as far as the sconces for the stairs i have a um, motion sensor in it which is also from daylight to dusk and that sort of thing so what i did is i actually abandoned that 
the, th the three-way right down here. Kept it up there and got to thinking, why do I need this switch? If it just comes on, that way it's on during the, uh, at night, turns off during the day, has a button up there, you can turn it on. I figured that would be great. Uh, unfortunately, I got a cover plate there. Uh, and then the last, lastly, the troubleshooting out there in the garage was uh, she rockers. So, so as you remember from the very beginning, uh, that GFCI, GFCI, as soon as I tripped it, popped the breaker. Well, what it was is back over here. I actually replaced this outlet here, but there was a nick in the the positive wire, the, the load wire, the black wire. There was a little nick in it from them routering out for that uh, electrical box. Well, that was touching the ground and therefore caused a short and, and that sort of thing. So got that fixed, got it replaced with a different one. I just need to put the cover plate back on there, put that one back on. And essentially, as far as the final electrical goes, Trim out, that's it. That's the trim out. So uh, it's taken me three and a, basically three and a half days to do everything. So it was a good amount of labor and I'm gonna be calling in for a final inspection tomorrow. So cross my fingers, everything should go well uh, and that sort of thing. So we're real close here on the home build. And, uh, and like always, I do, you know, I haven't said it enough when it comes to electrical, please hire an electrician if you're not sure of, of specific things. If you're getting in that panel and it's the first time or you're not sure, even watching the videos, make sure you hire an electrician. That way it gets done correctly. There's too much of a risk of electrocution, fire, all that sort of thing. But with my comfort level with it, I, I took that on myself. So uh, again, I'm a carpenter. I've been doing this for 23 years and I've been doing uh, some electrical for about half that time. So, but I always research, watching videos, just like you're doing, to make sure everything gets done right. It matters, and it matters a lot. So, that's it for the home build. Uh, I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Like always, be safe out there.